Wolf, uh, Slippery Rock Creek, starting at Route 19, about a third of a mile down there. Much, much stronger creek, much more water flowing through. And look at all the freshwater mussels or whatever they are here. So, I guess this will be the place to come. Uh, this water looks good, but not a bite so far. We'll see. I've had my first fish, almost surely a chub, but I remember in the Slippery Rock Creek Gorge last year, the other spot I've fished, there were trout in water like this, so I have a hunch I will be catching more trout today than smallmouth, not to mention chubs, of course. This stretch looks wonderful in many ways, and it's probably deep. I'll bet you this is like what I saw a lot in last year. Probably carp here and no smallies or trout. But I've got to try. Over if I can get it to those roots without getting tangled. I'm sure it's just a chub, but I actually got something. Oh! <laughs> this medium rod is hard. It's by far... The biggest frog I have seen, let's see if I can make him hop so you can see him. Come on, buddy. <laughs> He's actually green, too. Usually the ones in Wolf Creek are about an inch long. There's something swimming away from there, so maybe I've been cast into the wrong side. Well, I got something. I think it's a small egg, yeah. And on this medium action rod, even a little guy like this puts a tiny bit of a bend. All right. So there must be some smallies in here, but hopefully bigger ones. A raccoon, I guess it must be a raccoon, just feasts on these things here. That's fascinating. I suppose I just need to bring a shovel and dig in this mud. I could get them. I only got something. Doesn't feel big, but he stayed low. That's interesting. I mean, got something with my tube bait. I just went through one of those miserable patches of mud that I noticed Slippery Rock Creek has a lot of last year. But I'm suspecting there are big ones over there. better one. I have to remember to pause enough to let the stuff sink. Oh, this guy's actually good. Because usually, because I don't get a hit. Oh, he's strong. He might be worth weighing, actually. Yeah, I think you are. Oh! Gotcha. Yeah, you're worth weighing. One pound, 11 ounces, okay. Nice fish. Definitely got a pause in this water. Very fat at the bottom, maybe a mama. So I finally found a smallmouth spot here and it's deep enough that I really have to let it sink at times. That's the trick, the turkey. He's gotten closer, and there's an underwater log right over there. I was going for under the trees, but now I bet you a lot there's a big fish under that log. Problem is I don't know how to reach it. I think I might have to fish it from above, which is not good with the tube bait. So either a scientist put that there, or somebody does live close enough to care to put those there, like Lee Ligo has. Very large, I think smallie or a trout. Sun and, or shine, yeah, there he is. Come on, fish. There are big logs here, and I really don't want to get snagged on them.
I dart out from his hiding spot, which I think is the log there, and miss the spoon. It's interesting that the spoon does seem to catch smallies in Slippery Rock Creek. I mean, I caught another one on it in Wolf Creek yesterday. That was my second ever. But I've already caught a couple on it here. And missed one there. Come on, big one. No little one, it's big boy. Snag, probably scared whatever was left, but I'm in water up to my butt. And it's amazing, that's only probably a little over three feet, and yet I really don't enjoy it. You know, looking over there, it probably gets a little deeper, but I don't think too much. Anyway, this would be a wonderful fly fishing spot. Drifting a wet fly down here. I can only imagine what's actually in there, or how big. Having seen at least one big one. You should hear, I felt this yesterday near the bend in Wolf Creek near my house where I was all of a sudden worried I was walking through uh, yellow jackets. It's not, and I shouldn't have been, I wasn't worried, but it's honeybees, the laceweed. You should hear the humming. There are probably hundreds and hundreds of them enjoying the pollen of the laceweed here. that laceweed smells wonderful when it blossoms, as much as I hate the plant. It's sweet. If honey tastes that good, it would be worth having uh, some colonies around here. Alright, so here, there's an underwater log over there, plus that. Surely there are a couple of smallies here. Surely trout territory along here. Nothing so far, but using the spoon. This little guy hit it like a ton of bricks. Just like a good smallie does. I'll get you safe. All kinds of snag over there, but all kinds of good spots for trout and large smallies. Catch anything worth it. I mean, other than that tiny little smallie, but what a spot this should be at least for trout. Right. The spoon isn't getting a bite. I'm going to try in that eddy or the reverse area over there. Oh boy. This is a big one. See how much you weigh, buddy. I hope the video camera shows. It says one pound twelve ounces, but boy, did he feel a lot bigger than that. Hey, one move. Look at how thick you are. That, that belly. Big fish. What happened when I paused is, as has become customary, that nice shady area with a bunch of casts that actually got nothing. That time I finally did it right. Pause. Whew, that was a he hit hard. Wow. big as well. Yeah, I got you. Oh, 
probably under two, but boy does he bite hard. Come on, zero it out. It says 112 again. One thir one yeah, 112. Another fat big guy. Wow. Gorgeous. So ordinarily I don't catch them in moving water. I figured I'd catch them over in the if I got anything in that smooth water on the side. But he nailed it right in there so it's not too fast. Small is I'm not I don't know how to catch them I should say in the ultra fast water if they're living there. Chub, but on my first cast with the spoon into that eddy, something hit instantly. Probably not a trout, but I sure think they're a trout over there.